guess what? I met James. He came and visited me today on the way back from somewhere else. Um, I had a little bit more footage, but for some reason I must have had my hand over the speaker of my iPad and it didn't pick it up. It was a bit of footage with, I think it was with Marilyn on it. So sorry, Marilyn, the very end of you got cut off. But um, I've got 51 minutes here. I had to cut a few minutes off because I said I put my hand over the speaker on my iPad. But anyway, it was a great day. James talked to me, he talked to Amy, and he talked to Marilyn. So anyway, this is part of our day together. Thank you very much for meeting me, James. Hey, look everybody, look who I'm with. I'm here with James. James has popped Hi. off at my house, haven't you, James? Yes. And um, on his way, he'd been helping someone. Yeah, doing a, a rescue mission. Um, got them a job and accommodation and uh, a happier life than they had, shall we say. That's good. And then you're going back up to Norfolk? Yeah, gonna, gonna probably later this week, going to be helping out. That reminds me, I must ring and find out. <laughs> yeah. Later on. But yeah, uh, it's all systems go this week. And uh, Floss likes... Yeah, look at her, she's a little traitor. <laughs> Lost the dog. Yeah, look at you looking at me. You're sitting on his, on James's lap. Anyway, we'll do a few more videos to add to this because obviously James just popped in. It's good to have a, uh, what do you call it, a history of us. Like, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, that's the beginning of the video. I'm still with here with James. I just was pointing out something to him that um, I'd watched this video and it was about Blade Runners. And basically it was saying that Harrison Ford, because Gaff kept turning up, and Gaff had seen his, his, his memory. So why would he have seen his memory if, if he was not a cyborg like the people he's trying to kill? So basically I'd never thought of Harrison Ford as being one of them. But me and James were talking, so I thought it was a good point to put the camera back on. But I... You never know with all these Considering how many thousands and thousands of actors and actresses there are, why is it the same ones are getting all the key parts in all the big blockbuster films? <laughs> I did just say that. I was looking at my daughter's... Um, these are what my daughter uses to train on. There's six of them, right? So there's three actors playing two parts. It's because they're always playing other parts. As I was saying, I saw Brad Pitt on this thing and I was thinking, I can't... Floss, stop moaning. I couldn't even say... You know, I thought, well, I've seen you, you're, you play other people. Mm. Who are you? You know, it's questioned everything for me. And I was just saying to James that we get OBEs, MBEs, it goes up to a KGB. They cannot be accolades like we thought they were. You know, they're like military accolades. There seems to be some ritual element to it. Um... I mean, Tom Hanks, I could never, I used to think he was brilliant. I really favoured his... I just thought, what a brilliant actor. I said, he's so good, he could play the president. He's that good. Um, but now, no way, I don't want anything to do with Tom Hanks. It's like, now it explains why he's managed to get so many key parts in films. Because the whole mindset seems to be narcissistic. Whatever topic you look at, say if you take the religion, there's enough to lure you in. Just the same way a narcissist acts. It's cancerous as well, in, it, in its nature. And... It's greedy, so I think whether it be a secret society or whatever it is, they're always fearful of each other, stabbing each other in the back and, and the humiliating each other. I think that's why you had the Mark Zuckerberg on trial for Facebook misdemeanors in a kangaroo court. They just like to embarrass each, each other. I think he's a woman, by the way. I was just saying, my dog is going mad down there. Data from Star Look, Trek. She's going mad. That's a robot. <laughs> what are you they're doing? Elon Musk. They're, they're, I'm sure they're robots. I can't they stand. I can't stand that they're bloke. Real. Uh, no, they don't, because they're not, because they're computer programs. The, the, the look in the eyes on Zuckerberg as well looks demonic. I think he's a girl. If you if you take away this section of his head, mm. just above his eyes. It totally changes this part of the face. It looks like a girl. But anyway, one second, I've got to stop the video. A lot of this is, well, they are, as the, as the name suggests, they're programming. Um, when we talk about our formative years, and you think what you do with a disc when you put in a com into a computer, it has to be formatted. So that's the programming on us. Um, 
to condition us in a certain way. Uh, is it, it seems to be a slight distortion the whole time to dis-ease us. But it is, because you, you know like when you thought the sun was 93 million miles away, you looked up and you thought, God, that's 90. But now you think it's only so many miles away, maybe five, well, I think it's 9.3 miles away. Yeah. And it, it looks that close. Yeah. But before it looked like it was 93 million miles away, it, so that's how your it, mind... What actually, is it even there? Is it a solid thing? Is it plasma? Is it a frequency? Is it a projection onto the sky? Are we a projection from somewhere else into a physical body? And we're just... I don't know, I've looked at those high altitude balloon flights. The sun <laughs> actually is in the black, mm. right? But when you're in an aeroplane, you know you're much closer to it. Mm. But when you're up there in this high altitude balloon, it's say 15 miles up, you yeah. look like you're quite close to the sun. Yeah. And the sun is not right up there, you're level with the sun. Yeah. The other thing, I mean, interestingly, if you if you view a plane from a perspective, it looks to rise and set, same as the, the sun or the moon will do across the sky. But if the sun was actually setting, well, why isn't there a moment when the, all the entire underside, all the cloud is, is illuminated? Because that light will go in a straight line. It's always, it can illuminate the sides of a cloud and the, and the upper surfaces, but it's the, the, complete, the underside. I think that we don't understand the dimension it's in. Loads of people say the sun's in another dimension, the fourth dimension, and we're seeing it in the third dimension. And then that would make sense that it's, like if you could imagine it's here and it's there at the same time and it's going here, there, here, there, here, there sort of thing. It could be lenses. But I've seen on those high altitude, they're, when they get to 15 miles up, 16 miles, like, like they're, they're almost level yeah. with the sun. It is not that far away. I think and then think of the small corridor of life that we're living in. There's something else with this whole... It's not thousands of miles, it's like, if you were up at the sun, it'd be freezing up there. So you can only live down here probably up for about half a mile, that's it. We live in a half a mile corridor and everything's so perfect. Like, we're summer and yes, things are warmer. But it only has to change a little bit out there and our weather's completely changed. What's your experience of flying? What do you mean by that? Because, well, bearing in mind of what destroyed the future of air, airship travel was the R-33, the R-101, and obviously the Hindenburg, which happened to have a reporter there to film the whole thing suddenly bursting into flames. If you're on an airship and it would be like a luxurious leisurely path, you're sitting under a huge balloon. Your attention is either going to be, because you're traveling much slower, your attention is focused outwards or downwards. Talking about flying, yeah. yeah so if you're in an airship and you're traveling at a far more leisurely pace where you're sipping your champagne, as it were, as it, that's the impression I get of it, you'd be looking out the window. You can only focus on directly what you can see ahead or below. But you notice also with commercial flights, they have flight paths. So what areas of land do, do we never see? I do I'm... think they're flying us in an area and there could be more land on the other side, but they yeah. never take us there. But this whole thing with airships, why it all, I but... mean, they've got helium. They, they could have a very safe way to travel. They're, they're still the Zeppelin company in Germany. <laughs> I've changed my mind about all that, James. You know Schubberger? His name is Schubberger. He, was, he wasn't German. He was, I think he might have... I know that one you mean with the Vortex. Vortex. Yeah, and he's been... Walter Schubberger, wasn't he? He was around at the same time as Hitler. Hitler wanted him, but he didn't want to work with him. But he was looking at birds and how birds flew, and he made those engines, which we see on the aeroplanes now. Mm. They're not engines, are they? They're just well, they fans. Suggest airplanes and it's BP are delivering compressed air. It's BP air. It's not BP aircraft fuel. I mean, you think. What it is is that he understood. So those things are compressing, and he he learnt all that from birds. And you're like, what from a bird? And it's like now watching Josh Stone and that, and obviously talking. The birds are just charging themselves up on the wires and on the things. They're only stopping to charge themselves up before they fly again. Well, I can tell you from personal experience. So birds fly like those compressed mm. engines in the plane. And when it goes shh, 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 it's like a 4D flying going on now with those new ones, with the I Airbuses. Can, I can say from 
and personal experience of having two, I think there were 25 or 30,000 litre tanks sitting behind me um, on a trailer. I was on the quayside at the docks. I've been parked for about two minutes. I thought a truck had run into the back of the trailer because the liquid suddenly moved. Now, you look at the M57, the consumption of, of, of what they're telling you at takeoff, all that. Thank you, James. That would roll back. That Thank you, James. On Unscrambled somewhere, I used a lorry driver. He said I could use it because it was the same thing. He had to drive really, really slowly and he, sh he put his brakes on and then it went da doing. If you, it's like if, a sea wave hitting the back of the... If you get a car pull out in front of you and you've got a brake, you, 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 the poor cl clutch is getting burnt out. You, you're doing this because the, the liquid in the tanker behind is pulling you backwards and forwards all the time. It takes quite a while to set yeah, so that's why you have to come up to a junction in a certain way. Yeah, yeah so how could we then take off and the plane's going, shh, you know, sometimes oh, it goes out at 45 degrees and goes out with its wing up in the air. Look, look at how the, the hell could we do that with all that fuel in there? Look at the size of a tanker at a petrol station, right? Now picture how much more of those you would need. Now, where's the space in the wings for that much fuel? There isn't, because I already t I did videos on it. There isn't. And do you know what? Then I thought, I even looked at the actual carcass of the thing, and it tells you what they put in there. There's no room in there either. And then what it was is uh, Peter and Pete. I know you know them. Don't you? You've talked about them. Peter and Pete, oh, they're really good. They're like scientists. Anyway, they were explaining that it's the auxiliary pack in the back of the plane is the engine. And then what it is, is when you take off, sometimes those compressors break and here it goes. Zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah. They return and come back to the airport. They don't carry on flying no. on one. It's really important if anything goes wrong with one of them. But again, they made those things on the wings, whatever yeah. you want to call them, compressors, out of watching Schu Schumacher, whatever his name was, Schuberger, Schumacher, um, through watching the birds. Is it Schumacher or Schuberger? Schuberger. Yeah. Water, water yeah. And the sad thing was, he said he didn't want to work with Hitler. He went home and a couple of days later he was found dead. Oh, convenient. <laughs> Don't they always? Especially as he was got into levitation and everything. Mm. Yeah. And anyway, he will stop that one, James. I've heard stories of these model Egyptian planes. Apparently the Egyptians always did scale models of everything and they've had aeronautical experts look at these things and they said they must have known about warm air currents and everything because of the shape of the wings. Apparently they will outfly a paper aeroplane, um, I don't know, I forget even what the figure is, maybe 10 times, 100 times. Uh, there's a lot more. Well, do you know what I've thought? Do when you're know watching, not, I think what it is is, the new planes, the new Airbuses are military. They're, I'm not saying they're military planes, but they've used military technology. And when these things take off, they've just taken off and then they start turning and then you start watching 4D flying. Those things are flying in 4D. And that's why it, just above your head, they can be going shh. You know, they've just taken off. Well, bees work on... They're at, down, they're down at what helicopter. literally would be called ground level doing that. And, and I bet the sound from those aircraft is also, there's a sound vibration which is adding, that's maybe the fourth dimension aspect to it. Uh, this, you can levitate, you can find videos on YouTube, you can levitate rocks with sound. Um, so it's all about frequency and vibration. It's, and I'm sure you could, if you could. And electromagnetics. Yeah. If you had the right frequency, you could bring towers down like 911. If you could get to the same frequency of the steel. Like John could, Hutchinson effect. The molecular structure of it could be distorted quite easily with a beam or something. The technology's there. Well, I'm wondering myself, it was on a video, I don't know if you've seen it, but this guy, he's using a mirror and when he puts them together, it, well, they all turn into demons and objects. Mm. But I think that when I put my camera and I mentioned it on one of my videos, that as I was looking out, um, I've got a video on here I might be able to play you to show you what I mean in a minute. I might add it to this then, because I, I did make this video. Anyway, um, it just looked like there was a, the sky just looks like a barrage of things and little lights and faces and all sorts of things, like that's the matrix. It looked like it was whirring over the, the, the land, like a mist, and um, it isn't, it's them firing things at us, you know, frequencies probably. And the phone's picking up on it, that's the only thing I could think. Well they say we only see 1% of visible light between the infrared and the ultraviolet, so what about the other... 
Hey, very quickly, that, that, as you said that, that leads me on to that horrible gun they can fire at your head to taste, test your temperature, mm. at your penal gland. Mm. You don't want one of those? No. no. You don't, and that's that's also uh, that's another weird subject. Why would it? Oh. James is just showing me a picture of if you're going to wear a headdress, you do it properly. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. You look good in pink there, James. Thank you. <laughs> Where was that then? Um, that was random friends um, for ceremonies and things. That's an interesting experience um, when you see this reality um, the only way I can describe it is that moment when you get that sort of champagne of lights from a firework when you see trees and everything like that and it's in like electrical water this reality it's pretty amazing and you start thinking hmm this isn't what we're seeing I don't even know how we survive here to be honest because everything is electrical and I know we've got electrical pulse in our brain and in our heart, but like, we're also humans. We've got warm blood, but we're living in a somewhere we shouldn't be able to live because the sun is electric, the trees are electric, the air is electric, the ground's electric, the storms are electric, thunder is electric. Right in the centre of the heart is a tiny pinhole, which apparently is such an intense heat. It's our own star, because the heart is there's a suction and compression that isn't a pump, it's a regular. Yeah. It's the cells that's and the blood that's moving. Not the heart is just changing the because there's no way the heart could pump all the way. So how does someone get a clot then in it amazes, amazes me when people have clots. It could be all sorts. I mean it could be an air. air uh, like an air bubble. Are you into the blood is plasma then? Um, it's strange how when you look at it in your hand, it's blue, it comes out the red. The veins are the well, you've got the red and blue thing there, like hot and cold taps, water and fire. I mean, do, I mean, if you put your hand on there, does my hand feel hot? No, no, yeah. If I bled, I'd be hot, yeah. That's weird, isn't it? Is it when it hits the, when it, it's not hot inside us? No, I don't think, I don't think it's it when it hits the air, mm. it turns hot. Different reaction happening. In a fully enclosed system, normal, isn't it? It's it, 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 unless you unless you've got unless the skin's torn, it's it's not going to come out. It's staying within the skin, so it doesn't have any contact with the outside temperature. I'd even say I've, th I've just thought differently about it. You know, I, I I looked up I saw the videos where our heart isn't what they say it is. Well, summertime, a lot of the time I can walk around in a leather jacket. And people will say to me, how can you wear that in this weather? It's so hot. And I drink hot drinks. Because I think it, it works the other way. If you eat... Yeah, a hot drink when it's hot is quite refreshing. Mm. <laughs> eat, well, teas, you get uh, something like, I can't think of the name of it now. There's a... When I was cleaning, oh, working, tea. they say, what do you want to drink? A glass of water. I go, no, can I have a cup of tea? Mm. Because you're, you're, you're raising the temperature of the organs so it doesn't feel the contrast so greatly to the outside. So if you're drinking cold drinks and it's hot, the the, the, the organs are, are going to send out a signal. Um, Retreat. Uh, well, it's going to say it's hot. We, yeah. We need, we need to sweat out. Then you dehydrate. So then you start a cycle, and then you need an, you feel thirsty. You need another drink, and it then you're flushing your whole system mm. in a, in an endless trap. Um, Whereas I find if you drink the hot drinks or even, or room temperature is probably the ideal. Yeah. With us. Um, yeah, it's just just something I've sort of. Yeah. With. Seems to work. <laughs> well, we all think differently about the information that we did learn, and now yeah. we've and when you reprogram yourself, it's full of different pro information, isn't yeah. it? This is it. Thanks, James. Got to stop it. We have the lovely Amy with us now on my telephone. James is talking to Amy. Anyway, carry on now. Okay. Um, yeah, so this whole thing that, uh, that's going on, I was sent a video and I thought it's a, it's a good point. Uh, Spanish flu, 1918 to 1920. There was also an economic crash. 
compulsory wearing of masks and of course the, the vaccinations <laughs> Oh well. Uh, the world is a you're... stage. Yes, it's a stage. You, exactly oh, what you're doing now. Uh, you, you might know the answer to this. There's a character in the Bible in the New Testament called Simon, and I think he changes his name to something else. Peter. Peter. Yes. Ah, right. Because Karen was just showing me some of these char these characters that morph, and I've noticed they've got the biblical names. You've got George Michael, Simon Cowell. Oh. And then what is a cowl? It's a covering. I'm sure they're just putting these names out there in, in plain sight. Yeah. Oh, that's right. that's mm. fascinating. Mm. Yeah, that sounds right to me too. Yeah. That's what they do. Well, it's often, it's often mentioned as well about how Keanu Reeves is supposed to have this awakening after making the Matrix films and Jim Carrey after Ram The Truman Show. Well, what if... It is a case of the penny would drop, so they keep all these things in house, and that they are playing multiple parts using computer CGI. Right. That would yes. sort of make sense. I mean, there's even put the possibility that all this is filmed somewhere quite remote, and just giving the impression that one minute you're in the, the White House or the Kremlin or, or Buckingham Palace, and it's all background screens. Oh, I know. I agree. <laughs> Because when you see what they can do in the movies, when yeah. you watch a movie, we know it's not true. Do you know what? Something I found upsetting was well, watching Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and it gets to the bit where the child catcher is capturing the children and putting them in the cage. And when I slowed the footage down, they were never in that footage, they were superimposed afterwards. They were glitching, and nothing else was glitching, and I was like, what? So they were doing it in the 60s. So they've been doing this mind control for a long time. Oh. In fact, it's getting worse. It was supposed to be digital, and all they are is blurry now. Go <laughs> <laughs> <Get> away from <laughs> me! <laughs> well, it, like Martin has showed on Flat Earth British Channel, when you and, and the likes of John Levo, when you look at the photography in 1830, it's like high definition. Yeah, we said, didn't we? I mean, we're talking like billowing smoke from a steam engine, so it's not something that can be frozen. That that's going to be moving with the air. But by the time you get to the 1890s, the film quality has deteriorated. It's not gone the way yes. it should have gone. Do you know why that is then? I said that Queen Victoria was the last Tartarian, and when she 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 sort of passed over her power in the 1840s. So there you go. That would make sense. Because we're in the new regime by yeah. then. I've always thought with, I mean, if we go with the the the, the, the supposed chronology. Are you telling me that it's taken nearly 2,000 years for the government of England and Wales to come up with the idea of doing a census on a population? Because wasn't that the whole... Yeah, you the said that before. ...story. So, to me, that sounds like you're doing a stock check. That's the I whole know. purpose of a census. Well, we have the census every 10 years. Too. Yeah. This year is a census year. Oh. And I told my daughter we're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> she said that she already said it and oh. I said we won't participate in the, in the, uh, the census. I no. said, you know, because uh, 10 years ago I wasn't awake. This is 2020. I'm mm. wide awake as I'm going to be, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on a sec. And 2010 I was... I didn't think about it, but I said, then waking up this year, I told her, I said, well, we won't participate in the census. I don't like that, and we're no. not doing it. She said, Amy's a little soldier, don't you worry, uh, James. She's a little soldier now, aren't you, Amy? Yeah. No, a good soldier. Yeah. Amy's a spiritual soldier, aren't you, Amy? This is it. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, spiritual. <laughs> I think. Well, James is spiritual. I was telling James about the video today. We've done a bit of videoing, you know, with the Ashburgers autism. That still really got me, that one. And also the um, the Blade Runner one. Like, I never realised Harrison Ford was a Blade Runner. <laughs> what was it? That's nearly, that's nearly 40 years later I've realised that. See what we're not getting? So Amy was with Amy was well. I just found that video with you know with the smile and that on it when Amy and I watched that one together, and then I found the other one. That's really interesting that one. 
Yeah, it's, it's, ama- it's quite amazing, isn't it? So simple, really. Mm. I'm making sure I smile oh, consciously with both sides, even. I know, you'll look at someone now, when they're going, hmm, yeah. oh, hmm, you're going to say, oh, I know what you are. Yeah. But I've said to Amy before that there has to be that we're in some kind of spectrum because so many people are asleep and little zombies and some of us are awake. Well, some of us think we're awake, but a lot of us are more awake. And we can feel it and see it. And I said to um, Amy before, like, when we've, you know, you were talking about 9-11 and all that, 9-11 stuff, um, we can only look back on that and realise that it was not true afterwards. But we're in this and we know what's going on. Well, sort the, of. At the time that that happened, the first the first Monday afterwards, I, I went into work, and both myself and this other guy were ostracised because we dare to question. And we said, "Hang on a minute, how, do, how where's where do, where's the link to Afghanistan with all this?" Because nobody had claimed responsibility, and, and I, I, all I did was question it, and and then I get accused of being on the side of the terrorists. <laughs> Yeah, but that's I, terrible. When I saw it happen on the on the on the, on the television, I got called. I was painting a garage floor with tile paint, and I got called to, and I, and I just thought that's just like a controlled demolition, the way they bring down chim- chimneys in the UK. Well, yeah. So you you knew right away something. Something just you were didn't add up. Right. Well, I thought. I I, to be mean. honest, I I thought it was a psychological warfare with. What better way of striking and giving the message we can get to you? You might be the militarily the strongest nation in the world, but we can still get to you um, by other yes. means. But then, I mean, then when you when you start hearing about and, and think about this it, uh, realistically, you've got con- congested airspace. Are you going to tell me that there is no safety uh, measures put in place if a plane was to suddenly change course? Um, just on that day, Canada had airspace over America, and so it had to go to someone else before it came back. And then um, it was like the White House weren't following what they were following the week before because the rules got changed again, and then it got put back afterwards. Not one person got fired or told off about all the mistakes that happened on that day. Mm. And I, do you know what I think now? I don't because we can't say that. The footage of the coming down, I don't think that's real either. No. I think that the people that were there didn't see it the way that they're showing it to us. Mm. None of it. Feel, none it looks of it like a film. Right. None of it feels right about any of it. And you know what? I slowed the footage down. That building, the first one that goes, no, the one with the tower, the t- with the with the antenna on it, it 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 creases from the top of the building, not mm. from where supposedly that plane went in. It went from the top of the building. Crack! It's on sun and moon with the, with 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 the flames, and those flames have got faces in them. But it collapsed from the top. It's the just like Building Seven, but seven buildings went that day. But we can't say that much because you know they like about it. Also, oh, the, the we the, I remember the, at the time a fireman saying the biggest thing they'd found was half a telephone keypad, and that in itself is strange. It's like, well, where's all the steel gone in that building? This, this film exactly. footage showing was it 41 internal spines and allowing for the swaying with and also each, the, each tower was like three buildings put together what I'm saying is each build each section was reinforced the middle bit was reinforced it was extremely strong so it was like they said putting three buildings one on top of the other mm. so you had that and it came down like that mm. right it couldn't come down like that that's right and when I when I saw it on the TV, I mean, it was just so dramatic the way it all. Yeah, we watched it again and again and again and again and again. And I just like that's all I remember because that's but that's how they mind control us, isn't it? The mm. after the mind control, and then when the thing when the building collapsed, it just, I didn't think about it, but just, I didn't waken up this year. Green at that point, and then one side showed the Pentagon that got hit, and the other, and then I just watched the building go down. And the news guy, he, maybe we were all watching it at the same time, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, what just happened there?" And I was really frantic, and I, I said, "I'm yelling at the TV." I said, "The whole building just went down," and I was mm. just. 
I was horrified because I'd, 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 I'd been thinking of planes crashing and I had to stop because I was going on holiday with my children and I actually thought it was something to do with us. So I stopped thinking about it. And even though it didn't actually happen, my psyche was going planes, planes. I kept seeing pla two planes. Uh, so oh, it's bad. just, yeah. But then I stopped, yeah. I said, stopped thinking about it because I was getting on a plane. I was only back from my holiday a couple of days when it happened. It's, it was a terrible thing to do. It was, but we can't yeah. say that much, can we? Yeah, you can't say that much. Uh, but, um, yeah, then, uh, like, when I first, it took me a couple of years, but when I started reading some stuff about it, I could tell, you know, what really happened. Do you remember, Amy, I found that that bit of clippage, which looks like a continuous frame, is cut in half and they've spliced it together? Do you remember that one I did? It was in that one with the fire, uh, with the fire and the faces. I couldn't believe it. It looks like one continuous shot, but it isn't. It's shots put together. Oh, you mean uh, uh, the video you made about? Yeah. Or yeah, I know. Anyway, Amy, because we've been recording for a little bit, not that we're saying goodbye right now, but for the video here, can you say goodbye? Because I'm going to just turn it off. Yeah, I'll get me and James saying goodbye to each other before we go, but um, just for now, because James okay. wants to eat his sandwich and he's yeah. got a camera on him. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, just for just for the for the for the for the video for the channel. Anyway, James, I just put the camera back on because I want James to say something. The way I feel this, the way I feel this works is where is the change in the wording. Um, it says in Genesis, we were created in the image of God. Well, what if it's the imagination of God? The only nation being imagination and its states of mind. They put us into a state of fear. Um, so we're not in a, in a state of, of love. So we're operating in a fearful state. And then it, you'll see it with people as they become rich. They live in gated communities because they're fearful of someone stealing it. I mean, what a horrible way to live to be in fear um, and they, they've got their medium is the media they're suggesting all these things because they're all negative it's all to lower our vibration I think um, they don't yes. talk about do you remember the other James in New Zealand <coughs> anxiety they make money out of it they want us in a state of anxiety and often we think that what we're doing is we're talking wisdom but we're not we're just giving someone else our anxiety mm. it's really bad though, I'm not yeah. Anyway, any more James on that? Um, the, the what? Well, I think it really does come down to in terms of energy. I mean, if you think in spiritual terms, it's all about being positive. Well, put it in energy terms, it's positive rather than minus or negative. I think it's the energy and the frequency of the heart. Um, whereas they're trying to get us to operate from the ego mind and we're like we we think we're our opinions and uh, our ideas and that and that, that that's sort of part of our personality. Well, the other thing they've done is we live. Excuse me, I'm eating a sandwich. We live in our sub. Uh, we live out of our subconscious, even though we're living in what should be now. The dream in the dream. Our it? thoughts, everything are in our subconscious, and if that's not right, then the rest isn't right. Yeah, this is what we yeah. is these new thought writers like Neville Goddard were talking about and he was he talks about when he's had people like Mrs Roosevelt and Rockefellers that's how they've made their money they, 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 they're doing exactly the same thing it's all from imagination they're creating but they haven't got an imagination all they're doing is twisting something into something mm, that's why I think excuse me the Mandela effect happens mm, that's the glitches I think mm. There's something where we're not jumping with the realities. Yeah. It, it's, it, yeah, well, I've always said that, yes. The, well, the, the, the really, it, com the matrix. it comes down to outside of yourself, can you be 100% sure of anything? No. Right. I mean, I see it that we are all the creator in individual forms as co-creators going through an experience so we, we 
you can't see the creator as a whole, but you can see you can see right. in many manifestations. Um, yes. And it's all experiences, which then also changes the whole dynamics of what is good and what what is bad as well, in a way. Um, right. It, it seems, in a way, like a problem problem saving solving game, really, like a, a detective. Um, trying to find the best way of doing things with given every opportunity. But I think I think we've got basically an unlimited ticket in this fun fair and you can just keep going around as many times as you want, no matter what you do, and if you want to experience being, I don't know, run over by a car, you can feel that. Here is what you want it to be, I think. Yeah, if you believe it's whatever it is, it is. Well, I think that's why yeah. they get us to feel fear, because if we if we then feel fear we, we, we manifest it. Mm. So, exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and then you manifest, just like my family on Facebook. Mm. My sister, I unfriended them, but my sister told me she's still friends with them on Facebook. She said the one lady said, "Well, she just came out and admitted she's terrified to catch mm. this virus, and she doesn't want to die of this virus." I said, "Well, we're all going to die of something." Yeah. I said, "And you can't be afraid to die because then you're no. never going to live. We're all going to die, but uh, you know, we we all have our belief of what happens after. I believe mm. in uh, you know heaven as a Christian. I believe that you know we'll go or some." People believe in you know reincarnation, mm. but but you can't be afraid to die. Whatever no. that is, when our body dies, I believe our spirit goes on and go to a good place. You know. Yours will, Amy. But that's my. <laughs> she feeling. didn't hear me. I said yours will, Amy. Amy, yours will go to a good place because you're such a good person. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I think, you know, I like to think everybody is a loving God that understands and everything that, you know, we're going to go and be with him in a wonderful place when we... I'm not sure if this is hell here or purgatory or something. It feels like hell or it's yeah. purgatory. <laughs> and the Catholic yeah. Church teaches about purgatory. Many times in my life I've said I think we're... Yeah, he feels like that. He's got a camera pointing at his plate. Oh, oh he can't really eat now because he's got a camera pointing. Amy, I'm just going to finish this little video so James can eat. I'm sure, yes. I just put the camera back. James is talking. I just want to capture it. Sorry, we're, we're, out, we're, out. we're supposed to be eating, but go on, James. Well, you've got a lot, a lot of writers, they will use a first name. There are a few that use initials, but when you think J.K. Rowling, well, what's Rowling? Well, in Greek, there is no J and K. Is it some little coded reference even in that? Um, certainly within in the story oh, of Harry Potter. J.K. Then, yeah, J and K doesn't exist in the Greek alphabet. Yeah. <laughs> and I think... I so think I think what I think what they've done by changing the vowel sounds, they're changing the vibration that we because when we speak, you're you're hearing a vibration that the brain then decodes into words. Right. Um, the 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 one that appears in Greek is the joined A and E. Okay. Right. Well, you've got that. If you're not diseased. You're, you're eased, so you've got the e, e and A in that. You've got you can say you can spell C with S E A. You can breathe, which is E and A. You can feel, which you can spell. It, it, it seems to be a reference to the Creator. Yes. Hmm. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. It's yeah. also changed. It's also changed into the final, the final silent letter at the twenty seventh letter of the alphabet, the ampersand. And even that amp is power and. Amp is sand. Is it a reference to something amp eye sound? The third eye? Yeah. I think I've there's clues. I think there's clues in all these things. Um, they all seem to. Um, the words I think are the worst. The worst examples because I mean we can all say and describe, say for example, love. But how you how it feels to you, you can't actually show anybody you, you can't implant that feeling and say well this is how it feels you've all everybody's exactly. got their own interpretation of, of different states of mind as it were 
So exactly, that's right. It, well, in the English language, like we, I think、um, other languages have more words to describe.、Mm. Like we have love. We say I love. You can say I love pizza. I love、yeah. that man. I love.、Uh, mm. We use love for everything, but like other languages have a word, a specific word for love. It's、yeah. romantic love or a specific word. It's just love.、Uh, anything like they. We're very generalized、mm. in English.、Like, uh, they spent a long time changing our language, though, haven't they? Well, the thing, the thing I also question is. If if it's proven that children learn languages earlier, why is it in the UK we're not taught we're not taught taught either French or German until later on in our education, and why is English pushed so much as the like the universal language around the world? No, it's just a tiny place. It's one of the smaller, it's one of the supposedly one of the smaller countries, and yet our language is universal.、Mm. Well, I suppose America talks it, and New, Ze-、uh, New Zealand and Australia talk it. Canada talks it.、Mm. I suppose. But then it comes. But then that comes much, from us. How much can we believe about the history of the British Empire? <laughs> yeah, especially Amy. I've made another video about the Barbary ships. It seems that when it was happening, the other countries got insurance policies, and then they took out insurance policies, and then the Barbary ships didn't take their people. But come the、um, day of independence, that's changed everything, and then they went to war a lot after that, trying to get their because obviously there's no insurance now, so they could, the Barbary people could take who they wanted. I thought at a time when we're supposed to be running the world, but the world is running us. That's right. What? Anyway, we're just going back. Amy, you've got to say goodbye again because James is is、okay. he's he hasn't eaten his salad, his sandwich yet. Well, I've decided to ring Marilyn up. Hi, Marilyn. Hello, Karen. Hi. Yeah, she's coming to talk to James a little bit. So yeah, James went to help someone today, and then we've been sitting here. We've met Floss. Don't start. We've been making a few little videos talking about things. Yeah, the、uh, this whole thing with the system, the way I think it works is. You'll get somebody who gets the highest rate benefits, disability benefits, and、um, a prime position, property. They're sort of bought off. They report other people. You've got organisations like the British Legion, the Round Table. I mean, the Round Table is a King Arthur reference straight away, and. It's like a filtering system with a school. We pick out the the ones that are smart, like George Carling said. We want people smart enough to operate the machines, but not smart enough to work out what's going on. And you see this, you see this pattern. Anybody that does come up with a a way of developing a car that runs on water or something, that mysteriously dies.、Um, the rest of them seem to be bought off in the system. And this this whole system seems to work on people reporting each other. That, that's their version of the all-seeing eye, using people's greed against each other, because it's always divide and conquer, isn't it? Everything is divide and conquer. Where, where, whether it be politics, religion, science, you name it, there's always it's always pick a side. Right from school. Yeah. Right from school, from from primary school. Oh, it's sports day. You're in the red team. You're in the blue team. Everything's to make division, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's not to make it, us all to come together. It's all about dividing.、Nah. Well, look at the way they've done the sex thing. It, the, the impression we get of the Victorian age, women had no rights. Then it it it, it sort of carried on where, well, basically legally, sort of the man owned the woman. In the way it reads in the wills, and looking at the legislation of in the 19th century, now it's flipped over completely other the other way, and you've now got young men walking round that need bras because they've had chicken breasts from KFC. <laughs> it's the growth hormones they they pump into the into this all this shit they call food. Yeah, do you think it's all going to change? Nazar and Gazara, James. 
I, 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 I think what is that? What we're actually being shown all the time because they seem to work on mirrors. When, when we had a food shortage, is they had a, a shortage of adrenochrome. I think they're in turmoil, and I think they're like a, the way I described it. It's the it's the grand finale of a, a travelling fun fair, and they give it. They're giving us everything all at once. The maximum amount of confusion. Yeah. Yeah. There's all the speculation. You had that Trump's announcement of the sixth military space force, which has all gone quiet. So there's always there's always speculation. Yeah, because there is the cognitive engineering. If everybody woke up and realised what that was, it's about mind control. Hmm. Well, look at the look at the just the the, the sort of cartoon image in the, the in the film Paul. I mean, if you say, if you say the word alien, they automatically think of these three foot high greys with the big heads and no noses and no mouths. It, it's implanted in people's subconscious from sci-fi. We so you made a lot of sci-fi films in the sixties. I mean, they're not yeah. not have been very good, but they did. Mm. And they even made one where, you know, they thought well something came through on the television, didn't it? You know, we're at war and all that, and everybody believed it. Well, didn't they, they didn't, didn't have problems with... I think people took it seriously with the H.G. Wells War of the Worlds on the radio originally. And do you know where that stemmed from? That train in Arf Brighton, that electric train. They took glory, oh. they made drawings out of that train and used it in World of War of the Worlds. Oh, right. That's just mm. like, what? I think history is whatever you want it to be. Yeah. What's it kills the Martian dog? It's a virus, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, the famous virus. Well, the, the only virus is the information that's gone viral with lock, that lockdown. Oh. That's, the, that's the real virus. <laughs> well, they know what time you're there. It's instant. This is another aspect of it. The, the, the assault on small independent businesses as well. Apparently, you know, we all thought this 5G. Yeah. They bring a new um, wavelength mm. to do with Tesla frequency. Yeah. How true that is, I don't know. It's, you know, it's like everything. Is it well, a distraction? Is it the truth? I've seen seagulls sitting on, no, on LED lights. And we're, we're due for this good it's, it's strange because I've, I've seen, well, pigeons and seagulls sitting on these new LED street lamps, but it's funny how they don't sit on churches. I still think they are commissioned in the sense of collecting atmospheric energy, regardless of whether they're actually doing religious ceremonies in these things. I think these Apparently, buildings still work. Day, which I didn't know, but churches back in the day were healing. Yeah. They were looking at the stars as well. Well, you look look at what what you've got in a church. You've got an organ with windpipes. We've got wind one windpipe and lots of organs. It's some the baptism yeah. is something to do with water healing. The position and location of churches where I've looked at them, they're always near water. What surprised me though, is, um, this climate we're living in, James mm. and Karen, is that you don't hear the church leaders speaking at, you know, defending their churchgoers on what's happening. Yeah, you look, know, it's I funny. In one comment, they should grow some, grow some. Well, they, they're often quoting um fear no evil walk through this valley of shadows they were the first to lock the doors <laughs> <laughs> it's like well where's the fear no evil now <laughs> but i mean look at look at that the war on terror spelt t-e-r-r-a as in the earth has gone from this invisible terrorist group to now it's a germ or a virus that you can't see <laughs> so you can chase this thing forever now they can spin this one out as long as they want. Which isn't the big thing. Someone told me today, you need to go to the um, march on the August the 29th. Mm. He said, why? He said, it's going to all, all be changing 
pretty soon. I said, but at the same, on the other hand, if, if more people standing up, letting them know that we're not going to stand for this, mm. that's my take on it. The, the only Rather problem than is be the silent majority and leave it to others to do. The the problem the is with the apparently with tens of thousands, ten thousand people went out. Ah. The other week. It, Whether that's true, but well, the media you know, won't show it. Anything that will. Yeah, might. no, I, I don't think they. Cause I don't watch television. So. Well, people generally people are, are sheep, and if they think they're they're on the losing side, they jump ship very easily. So the media are not going to show any large gatherings of people protesting on anything. The BBC have done it with the nurses. They showed a tiny section, but if they'd have panned the camera around, there was a lot more. The BBC are renowned for giving false impressions of anything. You've only got to look at their sculptures on their headquarters buildings, and it's a corporation. <laughs> It's, mm. it's, it's media, it's scripted, it's news, it's north, east, west and south. It's getting you to look anywhere except inside yourself. It's getting you to look everywhere outside. <laughs> That's true, James. Well, if it's a religion, everybody's looking up at the sky for something. If it's, um, I don't know. Well, they know what time you're there. It's instant. This is another aspect of it. This, the, the, the assault on small independent businesses as well. Apparently, you know, we all thought this 5G. Yeah. They bring a new um, wavelength. Mm. There you are, me and James. James, his, his journey is nearly over visiting me, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And he's yeah. going to go yeah. back on the road now. He's got a what about? Three, four hours. Three, three hour drive, I think. But it doesn't help with the M4 being where they widen it. It's down to 50 mile an hour for, from Betty. It's a bit dark. I'm going to have to yeah. brighten this up, this video. But it's been a real pleasure meeting you, Thank James. You. You've had a really great journey. Yeah. yeah. He's talked to Amy and Marilyn. Yeah. All been very and me. Good. Yes. All, all, yeah. been, all been wonderful. Anyway, yeah, it's been nice meeting yep. you, James. Hey. It, it's, been, it's been a fantastic year of actually meeting people that I've spoke to. Or, conversations with on Facebook and YouTube and it, it's all good. Uh, That's good then isn't it? Mm. Anyway it's been a joy meeting you, thank you very much for popping in to see me. You're welcome. Yeah thank you.